This is probably one of my most favorite builds of all time. The main reason why is that is because it really has everything. It does damage, it looks fun to play, it has decent survival ability, and it has quite decent single target. Hydrosphere gem has a very a lot of text and we have to explain some things. When you cast it the first time it will create a ball, you can move it around and it will deal damage through the whole way it travels. This is very good because you can actually do a very decent clear with it. Just one press of cast, you can clear pretty much all the monsters. So because of that this build is very good to clear linear maps like uh, channel, toxic sewer and everything that has very straight paths because every time you cast your hydrosphere you will clear basically all the monsters that are in the way. Let's talk about how we freeze the hydrosphere which is the main thing that you want to do in this build. There are basically two ways that the hydrosphere can be frozen. The first one you can freeze it itself and for that to guarantee freeze every single time we use Rakshkardor's Patience, which is a reworked amulet in 3.19, and though it always guarantees freeze, shock and ignite, we will only use the freeze part of course, but if you want to do any other builds with it, you can do so. We can use uh, skills like Frostblink, which has quite a decent cold damage and doesn't have a very high crit chance, so the way how we can freeze the Hydrosphere is we can basically meet Slam and meet there frost blink it will freeze the hydrosphere for the pretty huge duration and then we can move it into pack of monsters there is also one other way to freeze the hydrosphere and it is basically to uh, proc a freeze from herald of ice which you can see uh, freeze procced proliferated to our hydrosphere and for that we need to have a specific stat which is either last freeze or uh, Exarch implicit on our gloves. You can choose whatever you want. I prefer to use Blast Freeze because we can then get a nerf on hit on our gloves, which is other source of increased damage for spells. So the way you would play normally, what I do recommend is to, before you start clearing, freeze the Hydrosphere with any skill you want. I use Frostblink for that. And then you can basically leap stun around and also leave some frosting if you need to freeze the hydrosphere once again and then you can basically travel and uh, keep basically killing everything also you can you just use frost blink for clear in some cases but it won't kill all rares on the high tier maps so that's one thing you need to know there is also one very important stat that you always want to scale on hydrosphere and it is called Pulse frequency. When you freeze the Hydro Spill, it will pulse, and if you recast it, it will also pulse. So you can almost double your DPS by just standing still and recasting the Hydro Spill if you want to maximize your damage. The way how you can scale it is get a 20 quality gem, 30% uh, increase pull frequency as a helmet enchant, and then you can also try to increase your quality via Ashes of the Stars or Enhance or pretty much whatever way that you want. You can also place it in Yalas if you can sacrifice some defenses. The choice is up to you. You can scale it into some insane values, probably even 100% quality is possible. I think just getting 20 quality on gem and uh, enchant on helmet is decent enough for DPS increase. If we want to take a look at attributes, we need to remember that Rashkador's Patience as one of the downsides, it increases gem attribute requirements by 10%, so you will need a little bit more dexterity than usual, around 138, if you want to use Awakened Added Cold Support. For this reason, you might want to get some dexterity on your gear and get as many dexterity from all of your unique pieces like Sacrophian Coil and Rashkador's Patience, which I'll be talking about in a moment. In case of strength, it's not really a huge issue, maybe you'll need like one roll of strength on your gear and that's basically it. Sedency is probably one of the most exciting things that this build features. The main reason why I wanted to play Inquisitor is because I dropped Insane Watcher's Eye, but 
keep in mind that this is completely not required to play this build and the power of this water eye falls off in the late game and it's at best 10% damage increase and you can completely ignore it and the build is still playable. Of course, as probably all the Inquisitors we take use of Consecrated Ground and the fact that it will regenerate lots of our energy shield as well as life and we completely ignore elemental resistance because we are critting almost 100% of the time in case we don't we apply minus 10 resistance from ascendancy and also minus 10 resistances from hydrosphere very good thing is that we have lots of strength so our crit chance is increased with just ascendancy by insane amount the final passive tree does lots of things so i will try to explain it one by one First of all, I'm using a Maven Jewel in place of a Conduit Keystone. I'm taking like three notables. Probably the most important one is Overcharge to get some Frenzy and Endurance charges on kill, as well as Hired Killer for 2% life on kill. And I'm also taking like one Crit Multi Crit Chance notable. Our main issue with this build is fitting all of our auras, so that's why we need to travel all the way from Sovereignty to Influence and we really need both of these clusters and other investment is of course to damage, life, some power charges, increased damage taken as well as one large cluster jewel with cold and for the aura reasons we need to mana reservation efficiency of skills clusters with notables to both hatred and zealotry. Because we are playing inquisitor we use glorious vanity with doriani to get corrupted soul or lots of extra energy shield and by doing this we take full use of our regeneration from our ascendancy and this is a very good survivability increase. Let's talk about our sixling which is of course Hydrosphere. We'll be using increased crit damage and power charge on crit as two mandatory supports. Power charge on crit makes sure that it will always generate power charges for us and we'll get some more damage per power charge thanks to having 5 power charges total. Increased crit damage is no brainer and before we have around 100% crit chance we can use increased crit strikes instead of empower and we can use regular added cold instead of eric net added cold if we want to keep ourselves on budget. Inspiration is a very good way to deal with some mana issues as, as well as get some crit chance and elemental damage so that's a very good support too. If you are getting high crit chance first you should pretty much get rid of increased crit strikes for empower and this way you increase your damage by insane amount because scaling hydrosphere gem level is basically like 15% dps increase every single level and getting awakened other gold is as good as upgrading empower 3 to 4 which is even more free damage for our build which is also what i would recommend other things that is very important in our build is auras, we use 6 of them and the way how you want to approach it is you want to start with Hatred and Zelotry first and after that you want to feel some sort of clarity to get mana regen to a comfortable level get vitality level 1 for 8% damage increased from our tree then you want to get Herald of Ice, probably linked with increased AoE or some better clear and then you want to try as best as you can to fit determination into your build because before that your survivability will be quite low against physical damage but if you want to get your survivability faster you can replace the lottery it's completely fine if you can go on you can put your increased crit strikes with your herald of ice and then you can buy enlightened four and link all of the gems with it. Enlighten 3 probably is enough. If you have all the clusters, all the jewels with increased mana reservation efficiency of skills, or if you could afford Ashes of the Stars, you can also use that. Basically, you want to try as hard as you can to feed all of the auras. It's not very easy and it will cost you some money. Enlighten 4 is, of course, very expensive, so if you can't afford it, use some alternatives or Enlighten 3. If you can achieve this, your Molten Shell will save you as many times as you pretty much want, because your armor will reach insane amounts. Now let's talk about the rest of the gems, which is 
very straightforward for mobility, we use both Leap Slam with faster attacks as well as Frost Blink with faster casting and Arcane Surge. The playstyle of this is you use Leap Slam and mid air you use Frost Blink to cancel the Leap Slam cooldown and then you can Leap Slam again after a very short amount of time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a link in the description that explains the movement. We use Frost Shield for some increased crit chance if we struggle with it, as well as some defensive option. Bal Molten Shell with cast when damage taken is insane survivability. Bal Molten Shell is one of the most broken guard skills in the game. If you don't use it, you are probably trolling or not scaling armor, so try to use it is very good, even after countless nerfs that happened to it. Like, seriously. There isn't probably a better curse than Assassin's Mark, so Basically, try to use it on some bosses if you struggle with damage and it's completely fine if you don't want to use it at all. Talking about cure is actually a very fun thing because this build started working without any jewelry equipped. I had basically this jewelry, which is not good at all. You can craft it yourself, it's very easy. And uh, this jewelry brought me to tier 16. From then I just tweaked my build and found some sources of more damage and trying to fix my attribute problems, so that's the way how it ended. From the beginning, the staff, we use the staff for insane damage increase. For starters, you want to get plus 3 cold. If you can't get plus 3 cold because it's too expensive, you can get away with something like plus 3 lightning or plus 3 physical, because it will work on Hydrosphere. This game has so many tags that you can target with pretty much Anything that you want, plus 2 spell, plus 3 cold, plus 3 lightning, plus 3 fizz, it's very easy to get a stuff that will be useful for this skill, and it's probably one of the few skins that doesn't have any problem with it. For secondary stats, you want to get something like cold damage to spell, some spell damage, crit chance, crit multi, try to get whatever you want. This stuff costed me like maybe one less than two divines, so you can pick whatever you want from the market. I don't think it's very easy to craft these stuffs yourself, so try to get something from the market first and then consider crafting it yourself. For helmet you have two options, it's either Blizzard Crown with something like Warlord Influence or Heath Shiver. I don't understand why this helmet with Hydrosphere Enchant was cheaper than Blizzard Crown, I have completely no idea. Heath Shiver is probably one of the things that broke the build from the moment I equipped it. It was 150% more damage if I had no helmet equipped. It's completely insane, like this doubles your damage first and then enchant gives you like 50% more damage. The only downside of this hell is that it has no life and it's evasion based. These are the only two downsides of this helmet. It also gives you mana regen which is quite useful. Of course, trying to enchant your helm first is probably more important than getting a hip shipper. So if you prioritize that, maybe try to get like any helm. It doesn't need to be Blizzard Crown. It can be a Warlord base because it has some good stats like Power Charge, Crit Multi, whatever you want. Also, Rare Hermit has more survivability. So if you struggle with that and don't care about having insane DPS, you can use Blizzard Crown. It's completely fine. The body armor, probably the best one is something like rare if you don't want to use the alas. The reason why is that is because hatred aura effect is insane on our build. Once again we are playing this to call skill and we use cold damage. So hatred is broken for this build. Single best aura in the entire game for this. Try to have some stats connected to survivability like life, rest and try to get a prefix with this damage taken as fire taken as lightning, it's very good. Gloves is nothing special, life, res, and as for implicit, try to get unnerved of kill and maybe cold damage leech as life. Boots are quite important because we want to have open prefix to craft avoid chill movement speed, and this is one of the ways that we can guarantee our soul's ailment immunity, which is very useful. Amulet is rough. Rush Caldor's Patience, we use it to guarantee that our Frost Blink will always freeze the enemies. And one thing that you can swap it for is Ashes of the Stars because of quality and Reservation Efficiency. 
I don't think I will be replacing this amulet because I don't really feel the need for it. And I think this amulet is not that terrible, honestly. For rings, one of the rings is trying to fix all your problems with res and dexterity as well as get some life. If you can do that on one ring, it's very good. The Polaric De Devastation is probably the most expensive item you will see from all of these items. And we use it in right ring slot for covering enemies in frost, which is increased damage taken and reduced crit chance. It also has global critical strike chance, which is very useful, because if we have some hatred flat crit on our watcher's eye, it will increase also the crit on Herald of Ice. The bell doesn't look that good at first, but if we open our character tab, we'll know that we have, can, we have shock and ignite immunity, and this basically makes us ailment immune with ranking upgraded to avoid being frozen. Actually, the most amount of money you'll be putting into this build is to jewels. There are a few reasons for that. First of all, you can use some of your jewels to fix your chaos res, which is the case that I've done. The jewels are not that expensive, maybe all of this is worth like 4 to 5 divines. You can get as much as 20% chaos res from all of it, which is very decent. Of course, this Watcher's Eye doesn't exist on the market, so the way how you want to approach it is to start with Hatred Crit alone, and then probably get double Hatred, which is best in slot for this build. Glorious Vanity with Dorani Influence is for Corrupted Soul, and uh, you can use some Timeless Jeweler searches to get some stats that will, that will be useful for your build, like Spell Damage, Crit Multi, and even non curse Aura Effect. You can get a few things with jewels, I try to get some live mana reservation efficiency crit multi jewels, and the maven jewel with conduit is of course for these three points. It's something that I've done for testing and I've never used this jewel before, so it's probably not mandatory but I think it's fun and it's not that expensive, it's like one divine only. Bandits is of course kill all and for pantheons ranking is mandatory to get freeze immunity. And for minor pantheons it's completely optional for you. I'm lazy to swap it out so I'm using Garukan for cannot be maimed. But you can use Rislafa or Shakari if you are struggling with Chaos Res. If you don't, you can just use Grootful and you will be completely fine. For our flask we don't use anything exceptional. It's basically flask for... it's like flasks for Corrupted Blood. Diamond Flask with some crit chance is very good to roll crit chance, it's very insane for our build. As well as Granite with armor, Quartz with probably reduced effect of curses. This way, while we have all flasks up, we are curse immune and some movement speed quicksilver. One person that needs to receive a huge shout out is Aero. He's a PoE streamer and also puts his build guides on YouTube. He basically explained everything there was to explain about Hydrosphere and showed a uh, Occultist League starter version for this build, which really inspired me into diving deep into Hydrosphere and trying to find my own way into making it work. If you want to check his out, there is a link in the description to his channel, so go check him out, he has a very cool build. The reason why this build even exists in the first place is because I dropped Watcher's Eye and I wanted to use it into some build, but I had no idea what to skill choose, so I asked my friend and he told me Hydrosphere looks the coolest, and I've tried it, and I don't regret it, it's a very good skill. I'm quite, I'm kind of surprised that you can actually play the game with this skill. This build can do everything, it can do Sanctum League mechanic, it can do bosses, it can map very well, it doesn't die that easily. As softcore enjoyer, I think this build really meets all my expectations and I'm really considering click starting this build as sort of an off-meta challenge to see if I can succeed. I'm still amazed how you can approach this build from many different angles, how you can scale differently and I think you'll enjoy my approach but of course you can do it your own way. Hydrosphere is a very good skill and has probably lots of options to achieve a very comfortable level. Thank you very much for watching and I will be putting a next build guide this week, so subscribe if you want to see it and thank you for that and see you soon.